Jesus loves you. Hello, Sammy fam, and welcome back to another dreary but blessed day because today there is bread. Bread, bread's back in stock at the grocery store. The good sandwich bread. Thank you to all our essential workers, our bakeries out there, keeping me fed with this delicious sandwich bread. I really appreciate it. Did I do that right? One, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two. Prepper, 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 Maybe. Is that, is that how you count in like seven, four? It's been a long time. Let's cut this open. I'm always confused. Like, which side should I go from? This side or this? I feel like this side because it's softer looking, more flexible than this because I don't want it to crack when I try to stuff it full of ingredients. Be careful doing this, guys. Don't want to lose a finger. Ugh. Today we're going to be making kind of, I don't know, daddy's garbage pail sandwich. Because it's going to have just what I could kind of get at the store. I'm going to dig this out a little bit. Get a little room in here. Because it's hard to get ingredients to make anything super coherent, you know, or like buy a recipe because stuff is sold out. Plenty of food. It's just getting food to go together. So I bought what I could this morning. Going to the grocery store in the morning was a revelation. There's almost nobody there. I could stay six feet away from everybody. Everybody was being super cool about like, oh, I looked down this aisle and see a person. I'm going to go to the other aisle and loop around. Like... Didn't even have to like say anything to like get the fuck away from me to anybody. There were a couple old ladies there, gave them all the distance they needed. People waited, spaced out in line to check out. Beautiful, good job. Mm. The innards. The energy is so good. Okay. Let's start with level one. Level one of the spread, I think we're gonna go with some crispy onion rings, just frozen onion rings I just cooked. Break them up a little bit. Nice oniony flavor in the, that's the base of this sandwich. Next up, oops, I am making a mess. Delicious bacon with, um, I cooked it with a little bit of garlic powder on it. The trick is though, like, put that in closer to the end of your cooking so the garlic powder will burn, you know, in the bacon fat. But put it on near the end to take them out. You know, delicious garlicky bacon. One weird thing they had in stock that I was not expecting, but I'm very grateful for, um, is heirloom tomato. I was like, oh, maybe I should get some tomato to put on my sandwich. And then I saw heirloom tomato, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, I will pay whatever, $5 for a tomato just to get the good stuff. That's looking good. And then we have grocery store chicken cutlet here. Let's break it up. Oh, I'm dropping stuff everywhere. Oh, man, I might have bought too much chicken cutlet. We can always make another. Mmm. That is seasoned nicely. I can press it. Get everything in here because we still got to do a little bit of ranch. Come on. Not, oh, oh my God. Spread it out, spread it out, spread it out, 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 out. Oh, we're gonna have one ranchy side and one less ranchy side, but that's okay. Then it's a little bit of something for everybody. Crystal hot sauce. Little spice. A little garlic powder. I would have used fresh, um, like smashed or chopped garlic, but the store's a little low on garlic right now, so I'm conserving what I have for pasta dishes. And let's hit it with some American cheese, because we are going to throw this 
in an oven and get it super cheesy and melty. Got the white American, got the yellow American, Simpsons American here. I'm all about being multiracial cheese goodness because we are a melting pot and we need even more cheese actually. It's going to help hold this sandwich together in this trying time. Man, these are really hard to open when your fingers are already oily from handling everything. They're so good. American cheese is overlooked and over criticized. It's not a bad cheese for what it's used for, you know, grilled cheeses. I mix it with other fancier cheeses sometimes just to make them more melty. I'm eating too much before I get to the actual meal. I'm gonna throw this in the oven and we're gonna get it nice and crispy and melty. We'll be good to go. We're back with a nice crispy. Ooh. Beautiful melty sandwich now. Everything hot and ready. Um, sorry, I stole that from you. Um, pizza man from the past. Little Caesars. That's their catchphrase. Probably trademarked. I'm gonna have to demonetize this video, damn. But I think this needs one more little thing to touch more. Oh, there's a boom juice. Oh shit, I forgot it comes out kind of fast. I pulled this from the oven with my bare hands, which was not smart, but you know, you live and you learn. And I have not yet learned in my 31 years that I should not be grabbing stuff from the oven with my bare hands, even though I burned myself multiple times that way. Now that is a cross section I can be proud of. Beautiful layer of cheese, sauce in there, onions, tomatoes, bacon, chicken. It's gonna get a little messy. My cat's freaking out in the background. And actually, you know what, let's get, there are a few leftover ingredients here. Gonna just go ahead and snack on those two while we're at it. A couple leftover onion rings. And for these, I'm not trying to eat these plain, you know? You know what I gotta hit it with, the smoked sea salt. That's probably too much. That was fantastic. Ooh. Okay, moment of truth. Mm. That works really well. The onion flavor, the um, the ranch really saves it. Provides that nice. Juicy sauciness you need. Could just use mayo. That would be good too. Grocery store chicken, you know, a little bit dry, but it saves so much time. But that's why you gotta have the sauce on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the cheese, of course, helps. My original plan for this sandwich had, um, in my mind, I assumed that I could put like mozzarella sticks down it and that would look really cool and taste really good, but um, there were no mozzarella sticks, so I went with the onion rings instead, which the onion flavor is great and I love, and I would have had to find like another way to include onions in here if I hadn't done that. Um, hopefully in the future though, mozzarella sticks will come back in stock, I guess. People love some mozzarella sticks, so they stocked up on them. I guess people who like own homes around here and stuff have, you know, chest freezers in the basement. 
and they just put a ton of stuff in it, but all this apartment people are like, I can't go buy 50 packs of mozzarella sticks. Oh no. I'm put it in my freezer. But they put a sign up at my grocery store that I really like to stick it to all the hoarders. But they're gonna stop accepting returns for a while. So you won't be able to return any of your toilet paper or whatever, or your cleaning products that you bought too many of. So I appreciate that as someone who has gotten close to running out of toilet paper and couldn't find any. And has been struggling to find food that makes sense together. Not to complain too much because I know some people have it far worse than we do. Mm. We're very lucky in that we're both, you know, still employed and mm, so juicy. Worrying about the cost of food is not a problem. Or worrying about our grant is not a problem. But for a lot of people, that is not the case. Because a lot of jobs just disappeared. So I do know they and I in your own conscious would appreciate it if you clicked on the City Harvest Donate link below and gave something to help those people in need that's a, a food a food drive we're running. Think about it. Any amount counts. Mm. The tomato really helps with its juiciness and also the acidity is necessary when you have two kind of fatty breaded things in the sandwich. You don't want the entire sandwich to just be shades of brown and tan. A little bit of red in there. Mm. I need a drink. I hope you guys are all staying hydrated. There we go, much better. Today I woke up and went to the store and after that I ended up um, bringing the groceries home and then went back out on like a 13 mile walk after I charged my Fitbit, of course, because if the Fitbit doesn't count it, it doesn't count in real life, or at least that's how my mind registers it. I walked to Prospect Park and around like the outside of it on the streets because the interior of the park, you know, I was worried it would be too crowded. And there are lots of dumb people out on the streets who are like walking down the middle of the sidewalk, stopping and congregating, and it's so hard to avoid them. And it's like, just always walk as far to the right as possible. That way you leave all the rest of the empty space for people passing going the other way or people passing going the same way, you know. You're maximizing the distance between people then. If you walk in the middle of an empty space, there's less space on either side. But this has been a problem that I've gotten angry at for years before this ever happened. I'm just like, come on, people. Think about like lanes when you drive. You always drive on the right, pass on the left. You don't get into the left lane unless you're passing someone. You don't just sit there. But pedestrians don't know that here, apparently. 
I feel like pedestrian class should be a class in school. Like, it's more important than driver's ed in New York. Maybe part of the issue is, of course, people's selfishness and entitlement and not realizing that the rest of the world exists around them. And they aren't just alone out here. Not everything's about them. But another part of the issue might be that a lot of New Yorkers do not know how to drive. So they don't have that like drilled into their heads of state of the right. And also, I guess I'm the stereotypical white male who has ideas about how society could function more efficiently and safely if only it would follow my system. So I recognize that and realize it's um, problematic. But come on, people, just walk right. Mm. This is a filling boy. But a good boy. If you guys wouldn't mind, uh, let me know in the comments, like, what type of foods you're, you know, getting by on, surviving on. With limited access to stores right now. And restaurants. I'm so excited for whatever day, a month from now, two months from now, whenever it happens. When restaurants come back and, you know, some of the fear is lifted. The day that everybody can go out again. People are going to freak out here. I feel like more people are going to die from, like, alcohol-related deaths that day than people die in this crisis. JK, I know that's not true, but people will, though. People will die. Oh, that was almost... That was almost bad. Couldn't swallow the water for a second. There's going to be people partying in the streets, people yelling. Whatever restaurants survive will be packed. Everybody's going to be touching one another. I didn't touch nobody else other than my wife before this, though, so... That hasn't really changed anything for me. I've never really liked shaking people's hands. One time I was filming an interview with the famous charlatan and scam artist, Tony Robbins. And he shook my hand and he has like some weird pituitary gland disease. So he's a giant man. And he shakes your hand and he like wraps his whole giant monster hand around yours. Like, mm, it just envelops you. And I think it's very purposeful to like convey his power to you. Some bullshit masculinity thing. I hated that so much. I don't want to touch nobody. I ain't about that life. I'm about... Just staying alone. Outside of the, my immediately family circle of my wife and my cat.
That was a surprisingly good garbage grocery store sandwich from what I could get. Let me know what unique creations you are being forced to make by food availability problems. <clears throat> and I will probably steal your ideas if they sound good. Thank you very much for watching. What's giving me the burps? Ooh. Remember, Jesus loves you.